Hello, good afternoon and welcome everybody to the SAS, this afternoon's webinar. My name is Richard Hughes. I'm Director of Technology and Services here at Eclipse Computing. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, this afternoon, I'm delighted to have with us Ketan Jani from Infor Global Solutions. Uh, we are going to be focusing this afternoon on Infor's planning, forecasting, and budgeting solution uh, called DEPM. Um, I think this is a very timely, um, timely topic this afternoon. Something that we are seeing increasingly in number of meetings with customers, um, prospects. It's a very, very hot topic at the moment. So we'll just take a very quick look at the agenda, and I'll just go through very briefly um, the format for this afternoon. So if we'll just move that um, slide on quickly to the agenda. It is isn't seen. There you go. And what we'll do, we'll focus, there's quite a bit to get through, so the the core of the presentation will be um, very much the looking at the product itself. Um, Ketan will give a short um, overview of the solution and then we'll jump straight into the product and we'll have a solution demonstration. Once Ketan has wrapped that up, what we'll do to round off the session is we will have um, some questions and answers. So what I'd ask you to do is if you have any questions or if there's anything you see during the presentation that you would like to discuss at the end of the session, if you could very kindly use the chat functionality within the webinar software and you can then send us a question via chat. That will just help speed things up and allow us to manage the questions a little bit better. So what we'll do if you submit any of your questions during or at the end of the session, Emma, the organizer, will read through all of those and then we'll go through all of the questions and uh, hopefully provide you with answers to all of those. So what I'd like to do now is I'd like to hand over to Ketan from Info who is going to do to the solution overview and then the solution demonstration. Ketan, thank you. Fantastic. Thanks, Richard. Um, afternoon, everybody. As Richard mentioned, my name is Ketan Jani. Um, I work at Infor as a solutions consultant stroke value architect, concentrating primarily on our business intelligence, analytics, and performance management solutions, um, selling into various different vertical industries. Uh, my background is I used to work for Systems Union uh, many years ago, so have um, good experience of the Sun Systems product and how organizations have typically used or implemented budgeting and planning processes within the likes of Sun Systems and its own ecosystem of other products. Um, and what I'm going to be doing over the next 35 to 40 minutes or so, is I'm going to take you through our solution, um, which is a DEPM, and also give you a demonstration of how you can implement a planning solution um, that will allow you to really drive the value out of the actuals that you capture within various business processes in Sun Systems, but also thereafter feed them back in to Sun itself for the likes of budget checking. But what, what, what I wanted to do was just, first of all, just start off with a bit of background around how we see or have seen organizations working. If we look at most organizations, you know, most organizations tend to work across different processes. In fact, many organizations will work with multiple processes within the organizations across different departments across different projects, products, cost centers, etc., depending on how they are managing or analyzing the business. So, you know, some parts of the business may be putting together a sales plan, some parts of the business may be putting together a multi-year plan. For example, we work with housing associations where we're looking at 25-year plans, um, enabling them to plan some of their long-term fixed assets, i.e. properties moving forward. But what we find in our experience is everyone seems to work across different time horizons, different people working to different levels of detail. We all have different reporting, we all have different analytical needs today, and organizations are also today starting to monetize their data by enabling users from outside of the firewall or the ecosystem, i.e. customers, to come in and analyze and view data um, as well as entering certain plans, etc. itself. And to implement these types of 
processes. What most organizations tend to do is they will implement multiple different solutions. So for example, over here I have you know the finance team will have implemented an ERP system. I may have logistics warehousing will have implemented their own type of solution as well as a I may have implemented some form of SQL data warehouse. But what tends to happen is most organizations tend to have those solutions sat in silos. And to bring everything together, everyone reverts back to Excel. And wouldn't it be nice if it was only one Excel spreadsheet, but no business behaves like that. What we find is organizations then start, start to put, manage their business using a cottage industry of spreadsheets and one of the, an organization I was talking to just recently was actually telling us about a cottage industry of certain BI visualization solutions as well. So again, you know, it's very, very much a siloed approach. Everybody's talking in different silos, nothing's integrating. People are spending a vast amount of time reconciling between different reports, between different spreadsheets, between different analytical tools. Um, to come up with some form of answer and most often than not when we sat around a board table we could have different people coming up with different answers to the same question because they're looking at different sets of data. So we've taken that on board and we've created and put together um, something called DEPM which is a single integrated framework that brings together all of the facets of BI, business intelligence, and performance management. Um, a lot of organizations, um, a lot of vendors, um, customers, tend to use those two terms in blue interchangeably. Um, BI and performance management tend to use them interchangeably. We'd like to differentiate between the two um, here at Info in that business intelligence is very much looking at historic data, what's happened in the past. Um, you know, what did we sell? who did we sell it to, when did we sell it, etc., etc. But it's really real rear view mirror. Um, performance management, on the other hand, is then starting to take that historical data and start using it to model what's going to happen moving forwards. And that is through the likes of putting together plans, budgets, forecasts, etc., as well as some of the realms of well, where people are going today around the likes of big data, um, and machine learning using the likes of predictive um, analytics. And what we've done is we've brought all of those facets together using one technology, enabling our users to have one user experience and essentially it's coming out with um, one source of the truth itself. And I think the one technology is very, very important. This is not a solution that has been cobbled together um, using blue tack and sticky tape. It is a solution that's been built up from the ground. And you'll see that when I move on to the architecture itself. In terms of the architecture, if we just work up this diagram um, from the bottom up, it, DEPM will connect to any info application. Um, and the one that we're probably going to speak about the most today is Sun Systems. So we have the, we, we have the ability to talk to Sun Systems on a real-time and a batch basis. Yeah, um, as well as any other external data source, and I'll cover that in a minute. Real time versus batch, again, the level of integration is really, really dependent upon what the user's reporting or decision making latency is. For example, um, do I really need, as somebody enters a journal into the system, do I really want my accounts to reflect that straight away? Um, if I'm doing a some form of BI report, possibly, possibly not. Typically, I would wait for a period end to run some of my financial reporting. But if I'm doing something around actual versus budget comparison against purchasing, then I may want real time. So as people are raising requisitions in the system, I may want to record soft commitments. If I am recording soft commitments, I want to see those in my report. So again. The level of integration is really based around what your decision or reporting latency is. We talk about connecting to other external sources, so we can connect to anything that is OLADB or ODBC compliant, so anybody who's using some form of modern technology, modern database, 
Um, we've also started to incorporate things like JDBC connectivity as well as using the likes of APIs. And this allows us to go out and grab data from the likes of the web. So I was talking to a customer just the other day and one of the sources of data that we're looking to bring in with them is Twitter data. And why? What they want to understand is what are people saying about them, what are their consumers saying about them on the web. And we're using Twitter um, feeds to do that. So yes, absolutely, it does allow you to connect to absolutely any data source um, moving forwards. Once we've connected to the data source, everything is held within our BI technology. Okay, this is the platform that everything sits off. Okay, it is a set of highly optimized cubes that are optimized for one, getting data out, allowing users to slice and dice, drill down to lower levels of detail and answer their own business questions, but it is also optimized to allow users to enter data back into these cubes as well, okay? Um, so providing extensive write back capability. It is a technology that allows users to come in and self-serve themselves information or self-serve themselves when it comes to putting a budget or a plan together and is fully extendable today to include the likes of predictive modeling as well, okay? So that's the technology. Um, we have used that technology to build effectively two applications or two modules within DEPM. Financial consolidation, so this is the ability to take data from various general ledgers or ERP systems where they could be working across multiple charter accounts, maybe even using different currencies and consolidating those books together taking into account any for any intercompany transactions so that they're eliminated in order to ensure we're not overstating any um, profits. Um, right the way through to producing a set of books, be it in local GAP or IFRS formats um, and um, adhering to those standards. Okay, so it gives you, provides that financial consolidation piece. On the right hand side, you've also got budgeting and planning and this is where we're helping our customers move away from putting all of their budgets into Sun Systems or any other ERP system. So we will use this module here to actually manage the process of budgeting. This means as users flex budgets, as users wire budget from one department to another, to another, to another, as budgets are phasing out, as I incorporate a new forecast, I'm not having to always feed that data back into my Sun systems. And this was something, that, this used to be a bit of a challenge, certainly um, when I was working with Sun systems back in the day, that everything, I, every budget I captured, I was plugging back into one of my budget ledgers, one of my B2K ledgers. And before we knew it, our GLs were growing at an exponential rate. Um, and it was just full of budgeting transactions. And what we do now is we manage the process here, and we only feed the budget back to the back to Sun Systems when somebody says, I approve this budget. And we only really need to do that now for if I've got the likes of budget checking set in Sun Systems. Um, to say, you know, Ketan, you're about to go over budget. If you put this purchase requisition in, I'm not going to let you do that. Um, it's essentially what we do. So once we've either captured the data and put our plans together, we allow users to interact with the data in a multiple number of ways. Today, not everybody wants to work with tablet devices. I may want to log in through the web, and you'll see me do that in a minute. Some users just want to see PDFs that are emailed out to them. Some users may want to browse this data, and I use the word browse using Microsoft technology. So this is where you can have the data still sat within here, but I'm using the likes of PowerPoint, Word, Excel to see those figures um, within uh, Microsoft technology, and I'm, I, I'm using a tool that I'm familiar with, okay? And that is something we absolutely advocate um, moving forwards. In terms of the value that we help our customers drive from their data, obviously at the bottom, um, when I map this against value and intelligence on the X and Y um, axes themselves, first bit, got to get access to the data. Yes, some systems, that accessibility is predefined, it's already there, we have connectivity um, straight away. 
But then it's looking, helping organizations do different things, you know, do management reporting, answering questions around how we perform. But then I want to take that further. I want to do some ad hoc reporting, who performed, when, what, why. And I want to enable users, I want to empower users to come and self-serve themselves with those questions right the way through to then starting to look at how can we better manage performance and so manage business, the business on an exception basis. We tend to draw the line there because this is very, very much looking at historical. Okay, Very, very important, however, is rear view mirror. Where we're really now starting to help organizations drive value is around putting together a planning and budgeting process. How can we improve performance? Then I want to put some statistical analysis. What drivers will help me improve performance as well as how am I going to achieve my performance? I was using the likes of predictive analytics. But what we're seeing here is if we move up these questions, we can see the questions are becoming much, much more complex. Um, and this solution allows users, um, it, it grows with our users. Some of our customers bring the data and they put a plan together. Some of our customers bring data together, they do management reporting, ad hoc reporting, and then put a plan together. Some of our customers are doing data and going straight to predictive analytics. So the steps that you decide to take will, um, is really dependent upon the type of business questions that you're looking to answer the business. And all of this, like I said, is supported using one technology, one user experience, one source of the truth. And today what we're going to concentrate on is planning and budgeting. So the planning and budgeting module um, is a flexible solution where it allows you to model your business. Um, it comes as standard with a full financial core that supports the P&L, balance sheet, and cash flow. Okay? It allows you to enter comments against any budgets. It incorporates full workflow. It provides significant simulations and what-if analysis. But one thing that really stands out for most of our customers is the fact that it is a solution that is managed by the business as opposed to having to be managed by IT. Okay? And this is where we really empower the likes of finance. Um, in terms of the modeling, everything sits around what we call a planning cycle, where I can set a starting year, how long the cycle's for, and at the level of granularity I want to plan at. You can have different scenarios, which can incorporate different versions, different, um, different ways of planning. So it could be a top-down phase one, which I, which I build out or drive out to my department heads or my budget holders, and then allow them to create a, another version where they're now starting to build up um, through the budget from a bottoms-up process. A lot of our customers use this, um, you know, even, even incorporate a hybrid process as well. Um, we've talked about planning cycles. Once we've done that, um, just talk to you about what comes with the solution. Like I said, at the heart is a financial core, um, providing P&L, balance sheet, cash flow, where you can then add segments. Segments, think about these as your transaction analysis codes within some systems. Okay? So that can be your cost centers, your projects, your products, however you're analyzing your business. So that's what comes at the core of the solution. We also have a revenue plan that comes as part of the solution, which allows you to plan at a lot more granularity. So I can plan volumes, I can plan pricing, I can plan some of my costing. But what I'm doing there is those, once I've planned that, the revenue number and my effectively my direct costs would then hit the necessary lines on my p and and drive my balance sheet and cash flow thereafter. We also have workforce budgeting. So this is the ability to plan at an individual level or um, at a position level where again we're capturing things like actions, what kind of um, benefits am I going to give my staff, am I going to give them across the board a, an annual um, salary raise, you're doing that, you're doing that at a lot more granularity and that's feeding in the necessary um, indirect costs of my um, um, p &L. We also have capital planning available now as well, so this is the ability to plan for any fixed assets, um, so depreciation right the way through to any um, disposals or acquisitions that I make um, on any asset or asset class. Um, you do get the toolkit, so you can actually create your own sub -pl um, custom plans, um, and these are sub plans in their own right which can then be fed into the financial core. So I was working with an organization, um, I've been working with one quite recently, this organization rents out equipment, and their biggest driver was optimization of 
any one individual piece of equipment. Um, and what that was, what it does there, it allows them to manage that at various different levels, but then feed it into their PNL um, for analysis purposes um, thereafter. So th that's the solution. Um, we're going to be concentrating today primarily on the budgeting planning. I will do a bit of the analytics um, just so that you can see the value you can drive out of this. Um, but what I want to do is just move into demonstration of the solution itself. And as you can see, here I am. I've logged in. And at the moment, I've logged in as administrator. I've come in via Google Chrome. So again, the entire solution is web-based. Okay. Um, having logged in as administrator, I've got access to everything. So I've got some administration things I can do. I can also model the business. And I've got all the respective modules um, available to me here. And down here are my tasks. Okay. If I come down here, we talked about the planning cycle. If I come into the planning cycle itself, and the one we're going to look at is this one here, 2015-17, all I'm effectively doing is, F is specifying how I'm going to plan across the business itself. What T codes or transaction codes do I need? What's the cycle version? What's the time scope? So this is here me saying it starts in 2015. It's a length of three years and I'm doing it 2015 month, quarter year basis. Okay. If I cancel that and move over here to the right hand side, this bit here for my entities, these are all of the different companies that I've got set up. And then I can specify against each company the currency that they're going to plan in, whether it's active, and what departments I'm going to allow to plan against any of these. Okay, so the one we're going to look at today is, oops, didn't want to do that, is Genesis US. If I look at Genesis US under organization, I can see these are all of the organizations or departments that are allowed to plan against Genesis US. Okay. If I come out of here, we also have a concept of what we call planning steps. And these are effectively where, this is effectively where I now start segmenting out some of my charter accounts. For example, general and administration expenses. All I'm doing here on the right hand side is specifying which account codes can I enter data again, can I put a plan against for anyone planning step in the cycle itself. All right? So those are two really two, two of the main pieces of setup that have to be done. Over here on the right hand side, my tasks, I can choose my cycle, to which planning cycle do I want to work in, and also what entity. And from there that drives the respective planning steps that are available to me here. So for example, I can plan at an entire PNL level, and we'll come into this in a little while. I can do my G&A expenses, I can plan assets, I can plan liabilities. And all we've effectively done here is segmented out the chart of accounts. And having selected G&A expenses, I'm now presented with one of our standard planning templates. This is one of our analytical templates. That allows me to, one, compare against a previous year and a version. It allows me to choose an organization that I can plan against, i.e. a cost center. At the moment, it tells me at the top, you're planning against this demo, this cycle. You're planning against this entity in this currency. Okay? I can even see the status of this. If I click on that there, I could click Submit, and this budget version 1 for 2015 would get submitted. All right? We're not going to do that. We're going to start planning for 2017. Okay, so I'll select 2017 over here, and we'll select budget version 1. So this budget version 1, this could be a budget that's been set by the likes of finance and said, this is your top-down budget. Okay, what I can do is I might say, I actually want to create my own budget version, and I'm going to use budget version 5. And within planning and budgeting within DEPM, you are not restricted to the 10 budget ledgers as you are in some. You can have up to a million budget ledgers in any one um, cycle. Um, whether you'd want to do that, if you were, we would have um, serious considerations as to why <laughs> you need that many budget versions. But it does mean I can have multiple budget versions that need not necessarily map back to my budget ledgers in some systems. 
Over here on the left hand side, I want to say, right, I'm planning 2017. I want to base this on what happened in 2016. So I'll take 2016's data, and I'm not going to look at actual consolidation. I'll look at my actual source data. Okay. So these are my numbers, and this could, these are my actuals that are coming from Sun Systems. So utilities, I want to say, okay, 2017 budget version 5. Let's copy what happened in 2016 by clicking on the Chevron. It's now gone and copied 17,600 across these months based on last year's weightings. Okay, I can do the same thing for IT costs. Yeah, for office supplies, I'm going to basically put in a 10% increase of that 5,000, and I type that in. Alternatively, what I could do for cleaning, I'm going to copy 12,000 across. And I can use something here that says change by a percentage value, and I'll change this by 12.34%. Okay, so the users have the ability to come in, take last year's numbers, or take a set of reference numbers, and I could have just as easily taken 2017 budget version 1. So this could have been my top-down budget and flex some of those numbers, and I have that capability. We'll carry on working with the 2016 numbers um, just for flow of so you can see the transactions themselves. But hopefully that makes sense so far. Okay? If I look at my utilities, we copied across what happened in 2016, and we see in 2016 we accounted for utilities on a month-by-month -month basis. Right? What I might say for my utilities in 2016, 17, we're not going to do that on a month-by-month -month basis. What I could do is I could come in and enter it manually myself, or alternatively, I can use what we call phasing. Okay? I can phase it based on either another chartered account code, or I can phase it based on a particular method. Here's one, end of quarter, where I've got these ratios, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, where we've got a weighting of 1 in, um, in the month 3 of each quarter. And that's where I'm seeing these orange values. What this is showing me is this is what the original spread is, and this is what your redistributed spread is going to be. You can see I have the ability here to also create my own. So I was working with a retail customer the other day who was about wanting to do a 445 yeah, um, weekly um, type spread. Another customer was looking at bringing together a statistical forecast. So this was a hotel chain I was working with. And what they wanted to do was bring a statistical forecast to drive occupancy numbers. Um, so we, we, we created those for them. But if I click OK there, just keep an eye on these bars, we'll see it's now gone and spread those utilities across that trend there. And I've now got 17,600 spread in March 2017, May, um, whoops, June 2017, etc. Okay? Me and my wisdom, I could say, you know what, in January, I reckon there's going to be an overspill from December. And I can come into January 2017 and enter a number directly into there. And then once I've done that, I can put a comment in. And I'll put a comment in something like, because I can. Yeah. And that comment is now held against that. That number, 1,200 for that month, for that budget version, for this planning year, for this department, for this company, in this planning cycle. And all of these are just different dimensions that we're holding data against that allow um, users to uh, um, come in and plan um, accordingly okay, at different levels. But what's really happened is even these numbers that I've put in here have, once I put them in against group finance, it's also rolled it up for this entity, Genesis US. Okay? So it rolls and aggregates and summarizes data up as we enter it into the system itself. Okay? So again, that shows you some of those templates. We just keep an eye on some of these numbers, 1880 or 2017 budget five. Somebody else could come into here and look at the entire PL. So if I come into my um, planning on my entire PL, you can see of that, the effect it's actually having on profitability. So if I just select 2017, budget version 1 over here, and what we're getting 
is these are the numbers that we entered earlier. 2017, not budget one, sorry, there should be budget version five is where we enter the numbers. So it's now bringing back my P&L. And you can see I can't enter anything against there. Why? Because the entry of the data has been done at the other, at the other planning step. Okay, and that's the way I've set this up. But I could here, for personnel expenses, start plugging in numbers at a P&L level. Okay, and again, that 120,000, it will now go in a portion out, 10,000 each month, and then I can start playing around with those numbers for group finance. If I wanted to, let's go look at this for analytics. And I'm, just, I'm going to see something very, very different. Okay, for that department. And again, you can see we've not actually got any data against that department um, within this planning cycle itself. So what I wanted to do there was just give you a brief flavor of some of the financial planning that you have the ability to um, to create against, and then you've got all these other various sub plans. Um, you know, so here if I look at rental planning, this organization they sell um, vehicle types by every individual vehicle. Their driver was in January, I'm going to have a utilization of 56% utilized. And by the way, every time one of these we rent out one of these Vauxhall Vivaro nine seater buses, we also provide you know a van rack, a roof rack, a beacon, or whatever it is. And we're driving what we call ancillary revenue off the back of it. Yeah, um, automatically here it's generating my depreciation, some of my service and maintenance, and these are fixed allocations that I can set up in the system. Um, you can see quite you know quite a detailed level plan where this total rental income feeds my rental income line of my P&L. Um, and that, that this is how this organization is starting to use um, budgeting and planning, but planning at a much, much lower level of granularity. A lot of our users typically will then, having put plans and budgets together, we give them the ability to come and create reporting portals, reporting dashboards such that if I just log into these set of dashboards, I'm going to be seeing a sales dashboard as well as a finance dashboard. If I click on my finance dashboard, it's now going to present me with a number of um, filters that I may want to use to filter out my finance data by clicking OK. It will open up my finance dashboard where I see my high level KPIs. Yeah, my P&L KPIs, my cash flow, Etc. Etc. If I go and drill on my cash flow, I have the ability to do so, and I'm presented with a nice waterfall chart giving me that, with the ability to go down to a lot more detail. Okay, I can look at this on a trend basis, whatever, and then now I'll start drilling through my cash flow. Let's look at that through receivables, receivables third parties. Yeah, and at the moment this is looking at actuals, but it could just as easily be looking at a um, looking at a budget. Um, that's been generated. If we look at the PL, PL over here, I'm now able to analyze my actual versus budget with a variance with I've got then got some nice visualizations here on the left and on the right hand side telling me whether something's good, bad or ugly in my data. Um, with the ability to also here enter commentary. So this is one we wrote for a, another one of our customers. So here I could say eclipse numbers as promised to board. Yeah, and what they wanted was the ability to take those commentary values and then have those become notes to my accounts. Yeah, such that the, they wanted then, can I now create a PDF of this? Create my PDF, and I've now got that in a PDF document. Okay, so this is now you know the ability to do some analysis. I've entered my commentary, and this is now available for other people to come and view um, my particular analysis itself. If I just go back to my dashboard, um, you know, you've got other types of dashboard. A sales dashboard could look something like this, where I've got all my sales figures um, with the ability to then drill down. Let's look at these customers in a bit more detail. I've got a nice little revenue trend here that replaces a 12-column spreadsheet. Who do we give the most discount to? I can sort by that. 
Adriana, now let's start drilling around this data. I'm now looking at it by product. Let's look at the air filter and you can maybe look at it by time. And I'm seeing that there. If I just click on the back button, let's just go back over here. You probably saw something here for dairy and chilled products, drill to source transactions. So what we're doing here is providing the ability to now drill to whatever the source of this data was. And typically this could be Sun Systems. Okay? Because what we don't want to do is in budgeting and planning, in BI, in the analytical layer, we don't want to replicate every single transaction that you capture in Sun System. No. What we want to do, what we should be doing and best practice is allow this type of analytical solution the ability to help you answer 85% to 90% of your business questions. But then when you need to go down to the lowest level, that should be the exception, the 10%, we provide that drill down capability where all of the data that is brought back is brought back into this environment. Okay, I'm not having to alt tab into another solution, I'm not seeing a screen that is formatted differently, I've got the same user experience and it doesn't matter what that source transaction is. Okay? Um, and that's, that's really important to, for, for a lot of our customers themselves. If I, again, you know, just show you some of the other reports that come as standard with the application, if I come to financial reporting, you know, here's a typical cash flow, you know, a very technical cash flow um, over here where I can pick up all my numbers. If we look at 2017 year to date or whatever it is, the cash flow changes and I can see the impact the cash flows had. Okay? And this has all come from my profit and loss from ordinary operations. Um, this was a report, and again, you've got a full-blown report writer with this. And if I give you an example of one I wrote for another customer, they wanted a cash flow that looked a bit more like this, where they could say, my current period is February 2016, so these numbers here, these two columns are coming from actuals. These numbers are coming from whatever forecast version. Is it a budget or a forecast? I choose forecast, we can see all I've done is I've re-forecasted a particular project expenditure. This customer wanted the ability to then drill into this in more detail, view actuals versus forecast. And I've got these sales invoices. This is due to a customer always late on payment. Let's drill down on that to an accounts receivable drill. And this is actually drilling down into my receivables in um, the ERP, where I can see the customer, the invoice number, invoice date, due date, payment date amount, how many days they're typically overdue. Again, I've got some KPIs um, around that for me here. If I just click on the back button, brings me back here, and just go back into the cash flow again. You know, same thing, actual versus budget, whereas if I now look at my purchase invoices, I'm seeing something different. I see my purchase invoices, who I've purchased, what from, um, whether it was hosting fee or monthly maintenance as well as a GL coding. And again, you know, this is quite detailed level data. We would not expect to be bringing these types, you know, maybe this description or that into the cubes. This is data that's held in Sun that I'm bringing across. Okay. So what I'm hoping there is, um, I hope that's given you a brief flavor of what the solution is capable of doing. I'm just going to hand you back over to Richard, who who will host the questions and answers. That's great. Thank you very much, Ketan. That was an excellent demonstration. Thank you. So hopefully we've had a few questions come in in the meantime. And uh, Emma, if it's possible, can we check if we've got any questions and uh, go through those with Ketan? Yes, thank you. Please connect anyone. Let me know if you have any questions by entering a question on your keypad or by raising your hand. A question has already come in from Claire. She would like to know, are we integrating budgets back into Infor Sun systems? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we have the ability to take those budgets back into Sun systems. What we do find, a lot of customers no longer, um, they, they, they only take it back if they want to do things like budget check-in. That's the only real reason they need to take it back. Um, because they're, a lot of our customers are now starting to do all of their actual budget variance analysis using DEPM as opposed to you know feeding it back into Sun Systems and having to use the likes of Q&A to do that. 
Okay, thank you. She would also like to know, how does this sit in line with info Q&A? <laughs> okay, we get that quite a bit. Um, Q&A is, is more of a tactical solution, allowing you to do a lot of ad hoc queries at an account level, at a GL level, over some systems. Um, DEPM is a more strategic reporting and analytical tool. Um, it isn't running reports off the core data, unlike Q&A. So Q&A will go directly to the Sun Systems underlying ledger file or budget ledger file and bring data back. What we're doing here is we're taking that data, putting it into cubes that are optimized to help you handle large, large volumes of data. But um, you know, a lot of our customers use a hybrid approach. This does not necessarily have to replace Q&A in any way, shape, or form at all. Okay, and she also asks, what is the typical payback? Okay, payback time. Payback time really, really depends um, on whether you're doing things like reporting, budgeting, um, or on that. So typically, budget times, I mean, I can give you an example of an organization called Dana Faber. Um, is a cancer institute um, out in the States and the return on investment that they got was that they, they were able to reduce their budgeting time um, by two to three months. So again, you know, that's, that's quite significant when it comes to planning your cycle. And the way they've done that is they've eliminated spreadsheets, the need to use spreadsheets to manage the process and they use DEPM, which gives them full auditability, traceability, Every number you saw me enter earlier is audited. Well, is is written to an audit log, which can be reported on. So again, you know, we can come in and say, ah, somebody changed that number from 99 to 100. Who did it? When did they do it? And can, can we see what the number was previously? No further questions at the moment. Yeah, this is Richard. So I had a quick question as well. Presumably, you know, we talk a lot about Sun Systems, but you know, we're not limited uniquely to Sun Systems in terms of the GL systems that we can connect uh, this to, right? That's a very good question, Richard. Um, thank you for asking that one. Um, absolutely, um, Sun Systems. All the info products we integrate to, but we have other organisations out there who aren't using. You know, we, we've got this sitting over the likes of SAP, Microsoft Dynamics, Microsoft. Uh, um, Exactum, the vision. Um, we, we've got it sitting over all kinds of GLs. And one organization I've been working with recently is actually taking data out of the likes of Agresso and plugging it into here. Right. And presumably in terms of language, you know, we have a lot of international clients. Um, it's it's multi-language, multi-currency, yep. all that kind of stuff. Multi multilingual. Um, you know, there's a number of multi languages, obviously. The major European languages are there, but you do have, you know, the likes of um, uh, Mandarin, Chinese, etc. No further questions. Okay, great. Well, uh, what I'll do then is, if anybody does have any further questions um, for any of us, whether it's me for Ketan. Um, please feel free to contact us directly. I'll leave these contact details up here on the slide um, for a couple of minutes uh, as the webinar, webinar draws to a close. Um, so if you do have any questions, feel free to get in touch with us, email them, give us a call. Um, but if there are no further questions right now, all that remains really for me is to thank Ketan very, very much for that presentation. Um, thank you all for attending. Thanks for taking the time out this afternoon. And we look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you. Thanks, bye.